Here's another example of a uh, physics problem where we involve energy, work, and power. And this time, yes, we will include work and power. And let's read the problem. It says here, a 2,000 kilogram car is driven 1,000 meters along a horizontal road at 25 meters per second. That's probably a little bit more like 55 miles per hour or so. Uh, if friction and wind resistance exert a 1,000 Newton force on the car, how much work is done and how much power is required. All right, let's draw a little picture of that so we get a better feel for what we're, what's going on here. So here's our automobile. It's a fancy model driving along a road, a distance of 1,000 meters. So the distance D equals 1,000 meters. While the car is moving at a velocity V equals to 25 meters per second, and the mass of the car is equal to, um, what was it, 2,000 kilograms. I was going to write 1,000, but it's 2,000 kilograms. And so there is a force pushing against the car, 1,000 newtons. Well, um, I guess it doesn't say, uh, or it doesn't specifically say, but I would think that we can that it's implied that the car is moving at a constant speed that is not speeding up or slowing down so if the car is moving at a constant speed and it's not accelerating so that means Newton's second law says F equals ma if a is zero F net is zero that means there must be a force of a thousand Newtons pushing the car forward and so at the time that the car reaches the speed of 25 meters per second, the two forces are balanced. There's no net force on the car, so there's no acceleration, either positive or negative acceleration. Where does that force come from? Well, that probably comes from the engine of the car through the gears, pushing the car forward. And then since we're asking for how much work is done, we can then say that the definition of work, work is equal to force times distance. And so we can say that's equal to 1,000 Newtons times a distance of 1,000 meters, and that's equal to 1 million, or 1.0 times 10 to the sixth. And of course, what are the units of Newton meters? That's the same as joules. So the work done in this case is 1 million joules, 1 times 10 to the sixth joules. How much power is required? Well, the definition of power is equal to work divided by time, how much work is done per unit time. And we know what the work is done. The work is force times distance. So it's force times distance divided by time. And uh, distance divided by time, hmm, that sounds pretty familiar. That sounds like velocity. So this is equal to force times velocity. So to find the power the car requires to overcome the wind resistance and the friction at 25 meters per second, we simply have to multiply the force the engine applies, or the, in, or the, the force the engine applies to the car times the velocity of the car. So this is equal to 1,000 newtons times the velocity of 25 meters per second. And so this is equal to 25,000 newton meters per second. Now newton meters is joules, so this is equal to 25,000 joules per second, and we have a unit for that. Joules per second is actually equal to watts, so this is equal to 25,000 watts. Now we typically don't talk too much about cars having power in terms of watts, we tend to talk about cars having uh, power in terms of horsepower. So we can convert this, and it turns out the conversion factor to go from watts to horsepower. So we have horsepower at the top, watts at the bottom, because we want to get rid of that. And it turns out that one horsepower is 746 watts. So if we divide 25,000 by 746, we have the power required in terms of horsepower. So let's find out 25,000 divided by 746, and that looks like we need 33 and a half horsepower. There. So that's the power required to move the car at 25 meters per second under the friction and wind conditions that we set up for the problem. So that's fairly straightforward. Now, what would happen if the car began to drive up a hill? 
under the same circumstances. How much horsepower would a car need then? Hmm, let's come up with a good problem for that. See you on the next show.